Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Astro Imaging channel. I hope everyone is uh, doing well, staying safe, staying isolated. Uh, everyone here is all right. Everyone on the Astro Imaging channel so far has been all right. Let's hope it stays that way. And maybe in a couple months, we can get back to whatever normal is for us. Um, tonight, tonight we have a special guest. I hope everyone. Oh, I think I got to uh, mute myself over here. Give me a moment. All right, I'm muted. We have a special guest tonight, uh, JP Metzavanio. Uh, if you don't know who JP is, he is the guru of tone mapping. And I think that a good many of the people that watch the show don't live in under dark skies and end up doing narrow band imaging, just like me. And if you're not doing tone mapping to do your Hubble palette images, then it's probably something you should learn. Uh, so JP is going to give a presentation, a demonstration of tone mapping tonight, and he's going to show some of his images as well. And JP, if you're ready to go, uh, you can take it away. OK, I'm good to go. Good morning. Uh, I'm Finland. Uh, <laughs> it's 4 o'clock in the morning here. So it's morning to me. Let's start. First, I'm gonna show you some of my work and tell something about my, my just a second, what's this? Uh, something about my, my uh, location and environment where I'm, I'm, I'm doing my astrophotographing. I'm doing narrow band only, not because I'm so much love about narrow banding, but uh, it's only option because I'm shooting downtown Oulu, which is industrial city in northern Finland, uh, 65 degrees north. Uh, by the way, we are running out of astronomical darkness in any day now for six months due to the uh, very north location. Uh, light pollution is, is a big problem here, especially now when uh, uh, LED lights are common and they are broadband lights, so they are like sunlight. It's very difficult to filter out. My workflow, I'm going to show you later, is about narrowband processing and it's very effective. And maybe one of the reasons I, I start making those new workflows and new methods is that six months mandatory pause here. For astrophotographing, it's I have a lot of time to think, more time to think than actually doing the photographing. The weather, weather here is not very well in winter time, also, even though we have a lot of darkness. I'm going to first show you some of my my work and my tools that I'm working with, and then uh, there's a short presentation in slides about tone mapping, or divide and con conquer, as I call it nowadays. Let's go on. Here's my old telescope. It's old mid, 12 inch. There's a lot of pictures taken with this, this tool. Awful looking mess of wires. There's me. The left side is me and right side is the telescope. Both are fork mounted. Uh, here's one of my camera lenses, excellent camera lens, Canon EF 200 millimeter F1.8. And here's my second lens, which is, uh, Tokina, 300 millimeter, 2.8. And uh, here you can see my focusing system. This is a stock focuser, it's a TCF uh, focuser, temperature compensating focuser. And here you can see the L shape metal bracket. It's um, from old table, and this spring is from um, old desk lamp. And here you can see the round file. And that's taking care of the focusing. It's automated and it's even temperature compensated. So this is very simple and a very effective way to do focusing. And here's my latest. Uh, I don't have this anymore. Uh, I have a new telescope next autumn. Uh, this is 11 inch Celestron with um, Apogee Alde U16 camera. I love this camera, even though it's very big and bulky, but it's it's really, really good. And my mount is 10 micron, 1000. And there is also um, active optics unit here, but I don't use it now because this mount is 
too good. It's the per periodical error is something like one arc second. And here's my observatory. It's a rooftop, as you can see, and you know, this is Finland. We have snow. Okay, this is my first picture I'm going to show. This is a uh, 18 panel mosaic uh, of Cygnus uh, in narrow band. It took me about, let's say, four years to make this final. Here you can see a very rare picture of the supernova remained in this area. Let's go to closer. Here is a supernova remained. And actually, I, I, th I shot this supernova rem remained in, in a longer focal length. And this was the April picture about a year ago. Here you can see the ring. It's, it's visible only in O3. It's just O3 here. And this is close up from the this mosaic picture. So this is mosaic, so it's really big. It's a central part of the Ignus. And some close up. It's also mosaics. I do a lot of mosaics. I love the resolution what you can get. And here is uh, Crescent Nebula, taken with the old meat, even though it's not really a imaging scope. But it, it was possible to use at the imaging scope <laughs> with a lot of troubles. Here is some close-ups from the Cygnus. Also, this is the eastern part of the Cygnus and uh, the dragon, flying dragon nebula. Not too many pictures about this. Uh, this is why I'm love. This is the ring nebula in, in Cygnus. This is the wolf rayleigh star. I think it was uh, this one here. Uh, the stock front in 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 um, southern Cygnus. Uh, this is the panoramic picture, the mosaic picture from an uh, Pelican and North American Nebula. You can see the Pelican Nebula. I see. I always try to find uh, new viewpoints to on old objects. This is a, uh, the gas splits splitting the Pelican Nebula, which you can see here, and the North American Nebula. The Great Wall of Cygnus, and here is uh, I can't remember the name of this bright. But this is uh, SAR plus uh, 115 and ABLE uh, 71 render enabler. This actually was a cover picture of the Vatican Observatory calendar a um, year ago. So here's a place where the stars are born, and here's a dying star. And this is uh, the picture is covering about one square degrees of the sky. This is also in Cygnus. Here's uh, Melt the 15, the heart of the heart nebula. And um, by the way, pay attention to star colors. Uh, even though there's, they are uh, narrow band pictures, and usually people think there is no uh, star colors in, in narrow band pictures, but actually there is. Uh, they are not real uh, uh, like a visual spectrum colors, but they are colors. Uh, different filters are responding differently in. In, in a star, so there are colors, and I will show you how you get those star, star colors in the European picture. Of course, you can use uh, RGB stars, but I don't like to mix uh, different different techniques together, so I, I'm, I'm a kind of pu purist. If you do narrow banding, I'm not just doing narrow banding. I don't like to mix uh, RGB with it. Here's uh, one example of how powerful uh, the stone map technique is. This is a uh, monkey head nebula. Uh, and you can see this lower part here, it's never pictured before. It's, uh, I took this picture about 2015 or something like that. And, and this, is real this is real feature, but it's extremely dim. It's the same picture without stars, and uh, you can see even even better. Bubble nebula, taking with the old meat. Uh, by the way, the uh, 
monkey head nebula was taken with uh, Celestron 11 inch. And here is also kind of rare picture. Here is a planetary nebula next to a uh, bubble nebula. I haven't seen many pictures of it either. And uh, this is the Eastern whale. And closer, they're taking with um, Celestron 11 inch edge scope. Uh, this is the um, big rings triangle with the same scope. And here it's without stars and only O3 channel. So you can see like different layers. A uh, tone mapping technique makes this possible. I can split the pictures very. Here's a uh, supernova remained in, in Cassiopeia. And this is taken with the token at 300 millimeter lens. And this is taken with um, Celestron 11 inch edge telescope. And some supernova remains more. This is uh, CMAZE 147, taken with uh, Canon 200 millimeter camera lens. And this is a big mosaic picture of, of Kefeus. Actually, Kefeus, like here, here is, uh, this belongs to uh, Cassiopeia already. Uh, you can see the planetary nebula here. This is Sarplus 132. Uh, and the bubble nebula is there, and cave nebula, you can see there. Uh, this is, I, I took this picture about two years ago. It's uh, uh, OU4, planetary nebula. And we, without, it's only a O3 channel. It's cat eye nebula with old meat. And Jones 1, very, very dim planetary nebula. And uh, this is uh, Pu, P U W E, uh, planetary nebula. And it's really, really dim. I think this is only a three band, neuron band image of this nebula ever taken. Here's a James uh, Emerson 1. Okay, now the main subject today is the tone mapping technique, and I call it divide and conquer, because dividing is the key key term here. You can see in this cover picture, here is a picture with stars, and here without stars, and here is everything which is removed here. The basic idea is to separate different components of the picture, so I like, uh, high and low signal and noise components. Usually stars are high signal and, and the dim parts of the nebula are the low signal components. And then do the individual processing to both components with basic tools, leverage curves, etc. cetera, norm, normal processing. And after processing, uh, we bring back together those both components without any data lost. What are the benefits? It's much easier processing workflow. You will see it in my, my example. Uh, there's no risk to blow up stars. Uh, it gives a total control to uh, uh, the balancing different image elements. Uh, I'm kind of the control freak. So I love to have a total control of every part of my picture. Star colors are easy to set and control. And remember, we are talking now about narrowband imaging, but this technique is very, very suitable for HGP imaging as well. Star size and visibility are under absolute control. You can balance how much actually, um, when you build a pixel, you want to balance different elements so that they are not, if they're very dense star field, you don't want it, 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 everything is buried under it. So you can change the balance between them. Uh, noise handling is very easy with this technique because you, when you separate uh, high and low signal components, you also separate different kinds of noise. The white and black noise are in different frames. And very dim signal, signal can be stretched out from a thin data. And, and the final 
this is very important. The color channels doesn't need to be so in the same bending level. So what I'm doing, I'm using usually the strongest where the most uh, details are like H alpha. I, I shoot it bin it one to one. But when I'm shooting O3, which can be very, very featureless, it's like a blob. So I, I shoot it uh, like a bin at eight uh, or four, at least two. So what is the benefit for binning? So if you shoot at bin level, let's say two, you have uh, in one hour, you got as much signal as four hour in, in a bin level one. So it saves time. Okay, there is a few required, uh, what you need to do. The all light frames must be perfectly calibrated. If they are not perfectly calibrated, this technique only dig out all the flaws in, in a frame. And it has to be grad, gradient free. Uh, it, it can be done in, in after you separate the components because if you are used to like, um, a gradient exterminator uh, it's, it's excellent software it's it, it's not expensive and it's worth every penny i will show you that later okay so some some terms i'm going to use it's a difference map this is very important idea and basically what i'm talking to you i'm, I'm going to show you how i'm doing things but the more important that see exactly how i'm doing it technically is, is knowing why i am doing it because there's always so many ways to do the same thing. So difference in map, when, when you destroy the stars and you have an original picture, this difference map is containing all the information removed from here, everything, every pixel, bit by bit. Tone map, it's a star as color channel, O3, uh, S2, um, H alpha. And color map is a combine of those channels. Luminance map. Usually you don't use a luminous in, in narrow band imaging. Actually, you can't use it because if you it's very tempting to use or it's alpha as a luminance. But the problem is there is no info from O3 and S2. So if you use the it's alpha as a luminance, you you, you are uh, you mute all the O3 and as two signal if, if they are separated. But why doing, I, I, I create a luminance map. So I have H alpha screen, then I have tonal map bit uh, O3 and tone map bit S2. So I combine them. So now this can be used uh, as a luminance channel because it's, it, it has all the information needed. Yes, and, and finally here is an example. Uh, they are uh, supernova remained in, in Oregon. And uh, this is a 60 hour alpha exposure with um, UHY 9 camera and Canon 200 millimeters, uh, 1.8 optics full open. And as you can see, there is so many stars and very weak signal from the actual objects after 16 hours. Uh, when stars are removed, you can see uh, some level and curves, and you can see the objects quite easily. This is just an H alpha channel. And when you put stars back, you have already a quite good signal. And then you do the same thing to other channels and combine them to color picture. So this quite nice picture, I thought, if, if you compare where you start. Okay, now we are going to live processing and uh, uh, this... Jason, you want to take a second if there are any uh, questions over on YouTube? Yeah, good idea. I haven't seen any questions yet. Um, just people who want to know uh, where your website is and if you have an Astrobin. <laughs> uh, I used to have Astrobin, but now I I haven't used it for a couple of years. I don't know why. I just forget it. I have to go back. And I have a website. It's uh, I, I opened the first slide. Uh, sorry, uh, oh, right. here you can see the website. Right, that's right, okay. If for now I have time to write down the website. It is um, astroanarchy 
wax.com. It's Astro Anarchy, actually, it's, it's the name of my observatory and my website. And why it's Astro Anarchy? Uh, when I first published my first starless pictures or whatsoever, I got a lot of critic. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. It, it, it's, it's, you cannot do that. I said, well, I just did so I can, and I changed my name of my uh, website and observatory to Astro Anarchy because I don't follow the rules all the time. <laughs> Any other questions? That's it from YouTube so far. Sorry? That's it from YouTube. Okay. Nope. For now. Let's go on. So I'm using Photoshop. I, I know the people use different so softwares, and that's why I'm telling that uh, it's more important to what's why I'm doing things and exactly how. But of course, you can can copy. Uh, this is mosaic picture of the uh, North American Pelican Nebula. I took this a couple of years ago. And the picture I'm going to process today is, is this part here, this bright area in, in here. It's actually quite beautiful. Uh, this is very deep. Actually, this is very deep picture. It's a mosaic of uh, 18 panels. And it has almost 200 hours of exposures in it. Okay, what we have here, we have a H alpha channel, O3 channel, and S2 channel. And these channels are taking with uh, bin level four, and then scale up with with, uh, with H alpha. And all the pictures are calibrated and stacked, so they are an unlinearly stressed in 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 a CCD stack. Two uh, excellent software, by the way. Uh, usually, what you start, you just combine the channels and start stretching up and, and end up with the purple stars and a lot of problems and stuff. But what we're doing here is a tone mapping. So I explain what I'm doing and I, I tell every time what I'm doing with just they are very small text here and you probably not can see it. So I tell first and pay attention to layers. Uh, I duplicate this picture first. I'll copy here uh, and make here another layer down here. Now we <laughs> destroy the start. It's, it sounds awful, but uh, that's what we are going to do, or destroy the stars. And doing that, we use a filter, dust, and scratches yeah, under the noise. It's a dots, dust, and, and scratches filter. Uh, I select, I, I just zoom a little bit. Uh, you can see here the screen. I put threshold something like 25. I pay attention to screen here. Uh, you can see there is uh, stars here in the screen. I select, I, I first destroy small stars. So I set the radius something like, uh, let's say seven. And I check here because there is some bright details. I don't want to lose them. Uh, actually, it's not very dangerous if you lose some of them because uh, we will put them back later. But now, now it's good. And then you set, uh, change the threshold so that the star doesn't start to get blur. You can leave it more down. Okay, that's good. And it's always better to do several iterations. Uh, the new iteration, the same tool, noise, dust, and scratches. And we put radius down to let's say four, and uh, put threshold down. You can see it's got too much like this. And then uh, again, and then let's go radius three and threshold goes down to seven, four, that's good. And one more round with the radius two. And 
now. Okay, now we have all the small stars are gone. We have some large stars here. And one important step is easily forgotten is add back the dark details. I make a copy of the background, the original picture with stars, and you can see the stars are gone. I turn this to darken here. The reason I'm doing this, there is some dark details here. And if I don't do this, they are lost. And I merge it down here. Okay, now we take care of the larger stars. Here's a few stars which are not going away. We duplicate this layer and then we take here the noise tool again, dust and scratches. And I use a very large radius, let's say 99 or 109. And then I start to put down the threshold as long and there's something to see and one more round with the star yeah and i just lower the radius still quite high like 75 and one more step down yeah that's good enough. You need to have it smooth. And then again, we use original picture and put back dark details like this. And merge it down. Now we take a layer mask. Uh, just zoom a little bit. We take a layer and a layer mask and hide all like this. And we take a brush tool with white color and uh, the larger. And now we just pick the stars. It's very quick to do it like this. And if there is some uh, details near the stars and you want to don't want to lose them, let's zoom in and make uh, a bit smaller head. As you can see, it's quite fast when you do it like this. I usually do first small stars and then the larger stars here. Okay, it's, 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 I think it's good enough now for this demonstration. There's a few. Okay, and if you are not sure if this is a star or, or some detail, you just always, you can always uh, blink and, and I merge this down. You can always blink and see that everything is there. And remember, if you lose some minor details, it's, it's not a problem here at all, because we are putting everything back at the end. So now I have a starless picture, and then I have an original picture with stars. And now we are creating the difference map. This is really important step. So I, I saw it uh, with magnified. So what I'm doing, I select here image, an Apple image in Photoshop. And here, and I say blending mode to uh, not not blending mode, but yeah, second subtract here, and then I select the picture here. And now you can see already. So the picture I selected for was the starless one. And 
the mode is subtract and then all oh, call. Let's go back to the normal view. Now we have this picture here. And uh, this is quite a nice picture because this contain everything we removed from there. You can see there, there is some uh, minor details we lost. And if you look closer, this, this is pretty noiseless picture. <laughs> but if there is some white noise, it's, it's here now. And all the dark noise is here in this picture, as you can see. So if you want to do some noise reduction, it's, it's very easy to do it because they are separated. Now, now we have a starless picture here. And if you compare, this is star picture, and we check the uh, levels, you can see this is full. If you slide this slide this way, you're blowing up stars. Uh, if we look at the starless picture, levels it's empty you just can't put your slider here and check the balance and it's really easy to stretch up the picture of course you can use the curves in a normal way you want to make these parts darken and lighten up here and so on so you can do everything here. At this point, do you have anything to ask so far? Still no, a lot of chit chat um, on uh, other techniques um, related to comments and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> one question is, uh, are you are you a professional photographer? Uh, not a professional astrophotographer, <laughs> if you that mean. Uh, I, I'm an industrial designer, actually. Okay. I'm not a professional. Or a photographer. Okay, um, that's all the questions for right now. Okay, let's go on. And now I do the same processing for the other channels. And I keep this star picture here, and this O3. As I, as you can see, this is pretty featureless uh, channel here. So I can be a little bit more hard-handed with the dust and scratches. So I stress hold up here and radius down here. So I can uh, destroy all the stars in the one, one, one way. And even though this is featureless, we put back the black details, our dark details as, as before, like this. They have effect to your color. And now you can see there's a weak signal here, very weak signal but we can stretch it up as strong as we like. Without stars, it's easy. And we, I don't want to add any, any chromatic noise, so I smooth up, uh, I blur a little bit this picture. So let's see, with radius, I'm gonna use something like this. Uh, because there's really no details here, so you can use that. But I'll be using this only for colors. And it's, it's um, two channel. I do the same thing. Dust and scratches. Uh, I don't want to use details here, so I use a smaller radius. A larger threshold like this. I do an, an other iteration, let's say radius five. That's look good. And now we just need to get rid of those larger stars. So I put dark details back here, as I did earlier. You can see they are back, merge down. Uh, this and I make a copy of it and now I destroy the larger stars as, as in with uh, edge alpha channel. I put some larger radius here and let's pick up some. That's good. And uh, again, I return the dark details. Oh, sorry. 
and merge it down. And using mask, layer mask here, hide all. And again, a brush tool. So I can get rid of all the rest of the stars here. I do it quite fast here now. This is, we can, can't use an endless amount of time here. But you get the idea. Uh, there can be some small stars there, but I, I blur them out. Oh, sorry, it's still in a mask. Uh, I merged this down. So stars without stars. And I blur. So. I stretch it up again with um, just with levels. We use those curves later on. Okay, now we have uh, three tall map bit channels here. And actually, I make a copy of the original picture one more time. I want to save it for later use. The starless picture, and and then I I use this one as a color picture. I change the mold to RGB, uh, flatten it up, and um, you can see uh, there are channels. Oh, now it's the RGB picture and there are color channels here. So what I'm doing, I select S2, copy it, I use the, uh, I make a, I select all and uh, copy, and then I pass it to red channel. And then I make copy of O3, select all, and copy, and I pass it to a blue channel like this. Now we have uh, all the all the narrow path channels in place. And by the way, when I have seen around uh, narrow band images in, in map it colored or, or Hubble palette, uh, it, it looks like it's, it's trending to kill out all the green. Uh, the idea in Hubble palette is to balance all the channels equal, like uh, they are all equal. And you can do it by, by having a more exposure time or stretching the hell out of the weaker channels. But the idea is to have a an balance and no, no channel is dominating the color, color scene. That, that way, uh, all the different uh, elements in the picture are, are showing well. So I use the curves now. Uh, let's say, let's tune down a green a bit. And I don't want to kill the green in uh, in high end. And then I bring up the red a little bit. Not too much. OK. So here is, uh, actually, I, I turned down the red a little bit. Uh, it's too red here in the dark end, to my taste. Something like this. OK, well, what we are missing, we are missing stars here. And we don't have a luminance channel yet. So we. Prepare, um, we have here the original picture with stars and the starless picture here. You can bring, of course, you can bring those stars without star colors here directly. And this is the difference map picture we, we made a while ago. And I 
journey. This is also very important. Uh, I zoom a little bit, you can see what I'm doing. I changed the mode here to add the linear add. It's 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 very raw system. It put it back as it is. There's no filtering, no change whatsoever. So now it's back there as it was. And if we zoom a little bit, you can see all the stars we took away are there. They are back there. Of course, they are now uh, just white stars. And uh, by the way, when I said that we use curves and levels to both elements, the high signal and low signal, and if you don't do anything here, this looks a little bit artificial because we are stretched it hell out of the uh, color channels and stars are not stretched. So what I usually do, I use curves here and bring out the dimmer stars from here like this and turn down the brighter stars. And you can, of course, you can balance it as you like, but it looks much more natural when you, if you are red, stretch the picture and you stretch the stars too. So you have here uh, quite a nice star map. And, and I can see there is uh, very little noise in this picture because it's, uh, it's a good picture. But you, here in, in the corners, you can see there is some, 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 sno some small noise here. Uh, and all the white noise is now in this channel. There is no white noise in, in, in tone mapped picture. All, all, all the white noise are, is with stars. Well, how you can get rid of uh, the white noise with stars if uh, they are, it's like a star like. The, it, it's very easy because the no, white noise here is size is usually one pixel only. So you use filter. I zoom again a little bit so you can see. I take a filter, others, and minimum. Uh, minimum filter here. Don't get, uh, don't carry it away with this filter. You can uh, actually do a lot of harm with it. It's easy to make stars smaller, but it's it's uh, easily looks very artificial. So don't carry away with this. So here in a corner here, there was some no white noise. If I zoom in here, uh, you can see some very faint white noise here. I put radius like uh, 0 0.3. Stars are a little bit smaller uh, and the white noise is almost gone. We don't want to take it away 100%. It makes it look artificial again. And now it's gone, but I always do this. I fade minimum. So whatever you do, I take 50% off because it's so easy to overdo. So what I did, just did is um, anything you do in Photoshop, you can always go up to here, edit, uh, and here's fade minimum. So you can select it, how, how much you have this minimum effect here. You can see the picture if 100%, zero, 50%. So it's mild. It looks better that way. So now we get rid of the white noise. But we're not done yet with this picture. Uh, I turn this back to normal and put back here because we need, need to have a star colors. How we have star colors in in our open picture? I said I'm, I mentioned to you that um, in uh, even in in an open pictures, uh, stars has has a re um, different response to different filters. So there are differences. So it means that there's a different. Different stars, has a, some stars are, are stronger in O3 than others and so on. So they are different. So I can use that to create a narrow band star pictures. And we are now working with um, our, a Hubble palette. So I, I make a Hubble palette stars as well. Sounds funny, but 
it works. So I, I duplicate first uh, the original H alpha picture here, yeah, flatten it. Uh, I use this. I use this uh, as a base image and make mold to gray, the grayscale to RGB. Now it's a color picture. And again, I I select these pictures. I copy it. So, and it copy it and I passed it to a red channel. Like this, and then I take a O3 picture. And um, take it to blue channel here. Edit past like this. Now we have the picture with the Hubble palette here. We are interested only about the stars. Uh, I don't know what I did here. Okay. We have a um, oh, picture. This is the normal way you start working with uh, with the narrow band picture, but we use this only for the star colors. What I do, I want to see the star colors very well, so I take the other. I uh, just zoom a little bit so you can see better. I go filter other maximum this time it's very rare that you want to maximize star size but now we are doing it so i put radio something like what five or something five ish and now we have a big stars here so it's easier to see the actual color it doesn't look much now but there are real differences between those so we use curves to bring them out because the green is so strong, I turn it down like this. And blue and red are not too strong. And red is too much red in here. Let's see. Okay, this is good good start. We could we could go on later. They are very purple, so I change, I use um, selective colors. Uh, let's do it with magnifier. Image adjustment. Selective colors. So I change here the magentas and turn them down. So now you can see that we are we start to see the the star colors here, and then I turn the this difference in my picture to a color picture like this, and I drag it over here. We don't need any more of this, and. I continue working here. I put some little bit more saturation so we can see the star colors. And let's zoom in a bit. Okay, I use uh, again uh, selective colors, a little bit change the red balance, and there's a little bit too much magenta still. I, I remove this. Uh, let's see now it looks better maybe blue is too dominant so i turn down the blue a little bit okay let's keep it this way and now i turn this to a color and merge it down so what we have now we have color stars here and we bring this back to a starless picture here. 
this uh, technique with and now again the linear add. This technique is actually really useful with um, RGP pictures too. You can separate the you can process the star color separately, and it's it's much much easier than doing it you know, with with uh, other other parts of the picture. It's so much easier. I just uh, a little bit change things here more. And um, I think it's quite nice now. So uh, a question for you. Okay. Um, with regard to the star color, um, it looks fairly arbitrary. Um, kind of you're, you're kind of doing this by eyeball. Um, is I mean, so, since we since you're using the since you have the narrow band filters, you're not really getting the true star color to begin with, right? So you're just trying to have star color even if they're not entirely accurate is that is that right yeah it's, it's like it's all the colors in in um hubble palette picture uh the star, oh, okay. star colors yeah. are the same so but what i like to do i like to because there there is a color that I, so i i use that so uh i don't like to mix you can of course with this technique, it's very easy to use the RGB stars as well, but I like to use the same palette with the stars that's actual pictures. Was okay. that what you're asking? Um, I guess also as well, like, are you concerned about um, that the colors of the stars reflect their true color, or is it more that the stars have a color for how it looks? Yeah, as, as I said, that in, in the Hubble color, color picture, the nebula doesn't have a true color. That's true. Uh, and so the stars has the same palette color than the nebula itself. Okay, so I see. Not, yeah, right. I prefer that. But if if I do the uh, let's say with this technique, I can do a visual color palette. So then I use the real narrow band color because it's not same as the RGB color. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Any other questions? None so far. Okay, it's very simple. I, I see nobody want to ask anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe people are, uh, you, gotta, you gotta digest it, maybe watch it again and yeah, steps. <laughs> now, now, now we are going to uh, interesting stuff. <laughs> if this so far, it's, I, I did it very, very fast as, as you saw it. Um, you can tweak the colors, of course, in, in a picture as much as you want, how, how can you want it to be, uh, and so on. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some really, really useful tips and tricks now uh, at the end of this, this my presentation. Uh, this starless picture is really useful when you want to boost the picture, the different elements of your picture. And we don't want to have any effects to stars. So I turn off the stars. Sounds funny, turn off the stars. Like, okay. Uh, I place here the original starless picture. Actually, we haven't done yet the, uh, the we haven't done yet the uh, luminance mapping. Okay. So, this picture here is just for the colors, nothing else. So we are doing now the luminance map. We not use it for the stars, only for the picture. And we had S2 and O3 information. And this is the original uh, tone map at H alpha. So now we, I bring O3 information here over the H alpha and turn mode to screen. And then I change the opacity to about 25%, like this, and merge it down. Uh, you can use a 33%, but I, I found out that it's actually better to use a little bit lower percentage. I use 25, it's at 12 to 25, depends how good quality is your, and, and if you, and compare this to um, 
This is the original alpha, this is the boosted. So now it contained O3 information. And now we add, add S2 information here with the same method. We turn it to a screen and then we put, put the opposite to 25% and we merge it down. Now, if you compare these pictures, there's quite a difference. Uh, in many targets, uh, all the O3 areas are very different than H alpha areas and so on. Now we maybe need to use a little bit more levels and curves to rebalance this picture, something like that. And now we can use this one as a luminance map over everything. And you can see it's it changed the whole, whole game. And of course we used curves to make uh, what we want to do here. Let's, let's do it like this. Okay, not spend more time, but but you got uh, the luminance map, how we did it. We used the starless data and added top of the color map. It makes big difference. And uh, we still have the stars here, what we're gonna use. But I merged the luminance map down, and then I saw the very handy tips and tricks what you can do with the starless data. I place it over the original picture. Well, I want to boost, let's say here is a dark nebula which are very dim and this is some, some light details which are very very dim and diffuse. So I want to boost them. So why do I use, let's magnify a little bit so you can know. I use a filter, other and high pass. So why do let's go back to normal nice i select the radius if you want to boost up lots of features use a radius around 50. you can see what happened here uh this picture and this is the uh, uh, high pass picture I, I turn the mode to soft light you can see already what happened here uh, I don't want to add it in all, all the places, so I make a copy of the layer and add it here, merge down. And then I use a layer mask as before, hide all. And then I add this effect just where I want. For example, these darker parts of the nebula. And because we don't have any stars here, we have no effect to stars whatsoever. So it's it's much easier to work with the actual data. You have a much, much larger control. You can see the difference boosting the dark nebulas here, for example. Of course, you can change this mode to darken. So you just boost the dark nebulas or you can change the mode to lighten or boost the light, but you can use the both like this so i add this effect to here the boost up a few details you don't want to put it everywhere because it's, it's really really easy to overdo with this as well so i will show you how i'm handled overdoing this is just one 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 simple trick you can use and uh, now we have the stars here and if we are happy with the colors, well, I'm not very happy with the colors yet, but uh, I don't spend time, you got the idea. I, I merge it down and have ready picture here. So this is tone mapping. Any questions so far? Uh, JP, when you're creating your luminance layer, when you're adding yep. VHA with a screen blend, do you have to worry about blowing out your highlights? Because you're adding to the signal along those very bright ridges? No, actually, no, because I take care. I'm not always stretched to original pictures. I, as you saw when I uh, used the levels, I left something here, a small gap everywhere. And, and 
I never have had a problem with that because if you're not overstretched, the original uh, channels shouldn't have any problem. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, another question is, um, what width of narrowband filters do you typically use? Three nanometer, five nanometer, something else? Yeah, I, at the moment I'm using uh, Astrodon filters and there's a five nanometer H alpha and three nanometer O3 and three nanometer S2. Uh, they all can, of course, be three nanometer, which is much better, but I I don't wa want to separate the, H, the hydrogen and uh, 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 it's for mor morning. I, I have a brain. Yeah, um, I see nitrogen too. I yeah, think. yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's uh, that's all from YouTube land uh, as far as the questions go at the moment. Um, hey, Pete, do, you, do you have yep. any more? Uh, you want to show us any more, or is that? Yeah, this was pretty much about what I can now show about. Um, uh, Tone mapping, but I have a one surprise to you. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. If, if if this wasn't confused enough, I I love this myself, and I want to show it, share it with you. Uh, I have a uh, well. I have to. I check if it's here. No. Uh, it must be in my. Memory stick. No, actually, it's in YouTube. Uh, do you see YouTube if I open it here? I think so. It's one of my movies. You, you know, I have been asked to photographing about twenty five years, well, in in, in uh, like serious one, and I I made a method to turn any of my pictures to three D. Because I'm an industrial designer, I'm, a, I'm used to work with uh, uh, 3D softwares, and I just uh, show it to you in in a few seconds if I find it. I think it is here. Okay. Uh, well, before I show it to you, I just say a few words. Uh, this is nothing to do directly with the tone mapping, but it's um, because I can separate different elements in a picture very, very quickly. So I use the technique to do this. And the funny thing uh, in this 3D conversion is they are not um, pure guesswork. There is real data because we know many things uh, are, are in different uh, catalogs and so on. So I dig them out. So we know. What, so I was able to build kind of 3D skeleton about the nebulas, how they are. Of course, this is a, a, a close approximation of of reality, but it's close, very close. I work with some um, scientists too, with this um, some astronomers with this technique. Uh, I can't publish the results yet, but uh, this is really interesting. Uh, if, you my, want, if you sorry. want, sorry. We're not going to be able to hear your audio um, very well through this. How, do you want to um, paste the link into the chat here in the Hangouts, and I will post it over to the YouTube chat? So yeah, naturally. Can watch it. Yeah, I think that might work better. Yeah, I, I run it just a few seconds, so you can you get the idea. Sure. Is it okay? Uh, Why sure. don't you run it full screen, Jason? Yeah, I, I I will put it in full screen. Let's see, it's sir. Uh... HD. There must be a, some not too much bandwidth. Okay. I just run it like uh, two minutes and uh, then I give you a link. This is my picture of, um, you can see the name in the, in the left corner. It's 2D picture of the nebula. I add a third dimension to it. And 
they are not planes as it look here, but you can actually rotate the whole nebula and see your, and go around. The funny thing is that every single pixel in this 3D model is from the actual 2D picture. I just kind of give uh, di dimension information to my pictures, every pixel. Is this a technique that you're going to publish? No, it, it's actually it's it's, uh, it's kind of complex to make. So, but uh, the next technique I'm going to pop is a new technique. It's called uh, VARES. It's a, the variable resolution imaging, and that's that's going to be a game changer. Uh, okay, it's, it's JP, not. Sorry, do, do, JP. Does does this technique that you're using on this involve a spaceship? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> I I do like it. It, uh, I just sample something uh, with this, something interesting models here. Uh, and you mentioned something you're going to publish that's going to be a game changer. You want to give yeah. us a hint? Yeah, I give you your heads, heads up about that. Um, you know, when you are shooting, uh, it's no matter if it's, 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 it's it, uh, RGB or narrowband, and you're using binning. Yeah, being level two, you have like four times more sensitivity. But the price is the resolution. You lose the resolution, or you could have been four. You have like a like a sixteen time, one hour one to one bin. Uh, you need a sixteen hour one to one bin resolutions to have a, a one hour for bin four four, and so on. Uh, the, my new techniques is I call it like a variable resolution imaging, which is like a, like a, you combine different pin levels in one picture in five hour exposure you can have like 120 hours worth of data and you combine them so that uh, all the details are coming from the pin level one one and all the really fine stuff is coming from bin levels let's say eight where it's a little features but very deep, deep signal actually the picture i saw you I, I put this away for a while the first picture uh, in, the, in the presentation, not the first picture, but the picture in the presentation was this uh, monkey head nebula revealing the uh, revealing uh, this feature here. Uh, this is done by the, uh, my variable resolution imaging technique. First picture with this technique. So I haven't published it. A piece Sorry? of software or a captured technique? It, it, it's it's imaging technique, not processing technique. It, it's a, it's a different way to do the pictures. Well, I think we'd all be interested in that. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it will be ready in in a year or so. I need some uh, more testing. I don't want. To, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit perfectionist, so I want to be very straightforward with no quirks. Like now, I have to do a lot of manual work. I have, I have to remove all that. Uh, but in a year, I'm ready. So then I, then I will publish it. It's a game changer. If um, if I remember correctly, back in the early days of the Astro Imaging Channel, maybe the second or third year, Josh Smith did a preliminary tutorial on how to do some of that kind of stuff. Yep, it might be. I never, I haven't seen it. But... Now, you, where, what is the URL on that? Can you uh, copy the URL of your, and then paste it into the comments somehow? Is it, uh, what, this video or? Of the video. Yeah. I yeah or is, or, or is there a link? Is there a link from your website? Yeah, I can place, I don't know where to place them, but. <laughs> okay. In the lower right hand part of your screen, you'll see a little icon. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. If what click on that, the one that looks, yeah, the one that you write there, click on that, and you can paste right into that, and, and we'll have it. Okay, here's the video link. And uh, I'll share the... it with you, Tim. Yeah, exactly. If, Molly, if you put it up there, it'll show up as a link. Can you see it now? 3D video and a link? Yeah, we see it. And uh, I put my website link as well. So here's the Astro Anarchy block spot. I do have a uh, I do have a image archive as well. So I maybe I 
well, it's, it's I use a 10 for your service. So there is all everything I have done is there. So I give you a link there yeah, too. Here. It's kind of portfolio. Here you go. Molly, you gonna post that on the uh, YouTube? Uh, they're not showing up on, on my Hangouts chat for some reason. Oh, uh, come can by. You, are you guys getting them? Yeah, if you expand it and show all on your little- Yeah, yeah it's totally empty. I've got them. I'm, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Okay, okay, okay. 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 We got Toka, it. Toka, you're gonna do it, right? Uh, Terry just did. <laughs> yeah, Terry's okay. got it. <laughs> all right, we got it, we got it. Uh, gee, JP, that was just excellent. I was uh, I was dumbfounded. I, I was taking notes all the time. I've got to try some of those techniques. A yeah, there is the same. I I think maybe next time I should um, split the, all the, the different techniques in tone mapping to different lectures because it's uh, there's so much stuff like silent information which you you cannot put in in every, every documentation or so. So it's uh, uh, like a star handling or noise handling alone or everything else. It's it takes an hour to explain. Well, Open it. J JP, I'll just just a minute here. El, El, El Michael, uh, you, earlier um, you said, are there any questions? And we said if one or two, and then you said, oh, if that's all, they aren't asking any questions. <laughs> right about then, El, El Michael had just posted that uh, it's kind of like watching a virtuoso musician at his work. And I've actually heard some virtuoso musicians at their work. I have never stopped and asked them how they're doing it. I just sit there with my jaw hanging down and, and watched them do it, listen to them do it. And I think that's a lot of what was happening tonight. So keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's, it's in the video. You can watch it um, as many times as, as you like. So that's and that, that comment was made later in the in the YouTube stream. OK, <laughs> yeah, right, I think this video is going to have a lot of play. Uh, you can check back and look at the Astro Imaging Channel YouTube videos and see how many people are using it. I think you're going to get a lot of interest in this. And again, most of the people that are watching are probably going to be doing narrowband imaging. Yeah, it's, it's a narrowband imaging. It's a life savior for me because it's uh, awful. I mean, actually, this is getting worse uh, also because the, the LEDs are, are they are going through even no matter how narrow your filter is. If you if compared to the higher pressure sodium uh, or mercury lamps, which are yellowish light, uh, it's a narrow open light and it can be easily filtered out. But LEDs are off. So when do you get to the point where it's too light and you can't do any imaging at all? Uh, well, it's uh, at the moment I'm doing really dim targets, uh, but it's about the limit I have to give up about that in, in maybe in a year or two and then i can do a little bit brighter targets but the, the dim targets i i talk about are are like uh crazy dim <laughs> uh but you're like, so far north it must get to a point where it really doesn't get dark at night at all yeah it will it will so any the possible energy saving they say the uh, leds has uh they are taking it out by adding lights. <laughs> so they are inexpensive, so they place it everywhere. They are bright, they are too bright. Um, they make you actually blind when you are walking outside at night. <laughs> well, I, I think we're kind of getting to the end. And again, thank you very much for coming on, wait, JP. Wait, I, wait, 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 I have a question. OK. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't Alex, you probably want to add a little bit here at the end. Go ahead. No, well, no, I was just going to say, we've obviously been watching some narrow band pictures here. Yeah. Oh, but this, this techniques, a lot of what you showed us are perfectly applicable to RGB. Yes, it is. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I, I remember I had a picture that I needed done real well, and I had done it as well as I could. And then I sent it over to Eric, who 
have practices some of your techniques and um he sent it back to me like an hour later and it was like a whole different picture using these techniques of tone mapping that you were talking about here um and uh, actually that was a narrow band picture but is he says it, it works the same with with well, not the same but it works very effectively also with rgb lrgb pictures yeah they so i have used it for rgb when i'm doing some processing for my friends uh it works perfectly especially star colors are easier and generally the, the idea to split different different kind of data it's like you know if you have a your, your desk at home which is full of you know, empty coffee mugs and, and papers and stuff and you try to clean it without moving those stuff off it's very difficult to clean but if you take off the, all the straps from your table and it's just a few seconds it's clean you know, put it back there it, it's the same here you you have a picture with a different very different kind of elements and you try to process them at the same time it's not possible or it's really difficult and you don't have to make up fancy masks to protect your stars so you don't blow them out yeah. and just all that stuff yeah uh, you know there was a question i kind of passed over that could we uh, do the same thing with something like pix insight i guess my answer to that would be no not really it takes yeah. really the layers and the subtlety of, of photoshop to do what you do yeah actually i have seen um somewhere sometime in some tutorial for Pixinsight about tone mapping it's uh, it's not as you don't have the finesse in Pixinsight that you do Pixinsight yeah, not, is great for a lot of things but i don't think it's great for what the kind of work that you do yeah, well i have seen a tutorial it, it, it's it's uh, as i mentioned there it's not so important how i do it but it's what, why i'm doing it so you can do it in different tools if you understand why I'm doing it so yeah Alex who do we have next week do you want to make an announcement I'd love to make an announcement if only I could remember offhand but I can tell you what I can do is uh, I can first off get over there and then I can share my Richard is on next week oh thank you let me let me go into a little more detail sharing my screen uh, my entire screen and let me see where am i going with here oh, oh here's my here's my uh, one atlas and here's my other atlas pictures somebody was asking about them earlier um oh the astroimagingchannel.com if we go over we've done a really good job largely on on tolga's leadership on this but if you go over to the Astro Imaging Channel website, you will see that we've got a pretty darn good looking calendar. A JP was tonight. Richard is going to be here next week. Um, Eric, Alex, are you are you sharing your screen, or do I, you think you're sharing your screen? I you're think not I'm sharing your screen, Alex. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, you hang on. <laughs> My entire screen. Share. There we go. Now, where are we? Um, okay. Sorry, guys. I, I need to go back to sleep now. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's great. Okay. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, sorry to disturb your, your evening sleep, but uh, yeah. this thanks, was a JP, for being here. Uh, you, you're welcome. It was, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. We're still here, guys. Everybody else that's hanging out. Thanks for being here, JP. Um, oh, there you JP, go. Pardon? Well, okay, come on. Am I sharing my screen? Yes, you are. Okay, you. here's our calendar. And as I said, Tolga like filled up the whole freaking month of April, um, including, you know, remember we had two off days here doing NEEF yesterday and um, the review of NEEF next week. Um, and um, then Eric Adams is going to do perfect time to learn astrophotography. Hey, we're all here. We're all like, we can't do anything else. So let's learn some astrophotography. I spent three hours last night going through Warren's book on uh, trying to figure out what super bias would do. 
Matt Dietrich with Plainway, Brian Clements, Comet Processing. Brian is going to tell us about a technique he's come up with with Deep Sky Stacker to process comets. I am still looking for somebody who will go through the PIX Insight routine. Oh, Michael, you were talking like you've done it. Maybe you should step forward here, my man. And, um, and then um, I happen to be involved in... Um, um, a meteor search and the guys that help run that meteor search, De Denise Vida uh, and Bob Massey um, will be here with us in late in early May. Uh, Manny Lines is going to tell us about how he built his observatory. And then we're going to have some more citizen science coming in with Robert Zellum from Caltech. will be telling us about exoplanet searches with amateur equipment. Um, so you can use your own equipment stuff you've already got to look for exoplanets and it'll tell you why you should do it and how you should do it and stuff like that. So we've got a pretty good time set up for it, but you know how desperate I always am for getting more people to present. Um, we definitely need somebody who's worked with those comets to tell us how they got their comets. Here's my comet and here's my comet. And that folks is that, and I'm not the host tonight. I'm not the host because because I had certain difficulties with certain names tonight. So um, Eric decided to volunteer to be the host. So Eric, it's back to you, you're in charge. Uh, yeah, just one more thing. We've uh, had a couple of contributions in the last week and I just wanna thank everyone that you know, puts up whatever they can to help support the channel. Uh, it, it is well used and well appreciated. So just a personal thanks. And I think that we're all set. Uh, Tolga, are you ready? Everyone ready? Yeah, we're good to go. Good All night. Right, let's get out of here. Good night, right, good night everybody. Good night. <laughs>